So Nadav from um, your mum's house has quit. He decided to call it quits. And it seems a bit weird, timing-wise, because he hasn't got anything set up yet. Sorry, he said he's going to do some sort of podcast, Patreon thing. But it doesn't seem solidified just yet. And he's quitting before he's got something else set up. So it's a bit strange, the timing. Um, but some people are suggesting on the Your Mum's House podcast Reddit that this may have to do with that Rob Isler kid. He's got a podcast on um, Your Mum's House Network, but he's also a guest, I guess, on um, Your Mum's House. And on one episode, he was going a bit hard at Nadav. He was like, you know, basically teasing him and being a bit of a bully. And then in that in that kind of exchange, he got him to agree to do a marathon on New Year's Eve or some shit, right? And, um, you know, uh, Nadav maybe felt a little bit backed into a corner to do it. He kind of just went to end the ribbing and he agreed to it. And I think since then, he's felt a little bit, you know, off about the whole thing because Rob is a bit of a, can be a little bit, can be a little bit overbearing, let's say. I like him in general, but he's definitely got that former, he's got that kind of, uh, I'm in recovery energy. He's very highly strung sometimes. So he can be a little bit much. I can understand it. I like him. He's He can be funny, but I understand what, but um. So he did that. And then some people on his Reddit are suggesting that Nadav left is leaving because he doesn't want to do the marathon, <laughs> which is hilarious, right? He, he committed to doing his marathon and he's quitting because he doesn't want to do it. And um, yeah, he announced that he's leaving, which is interesting because this is off the back of that Bobby Hutch guy from Legion of Skanks or Gas Digital, sorry, that recently left. And it also makes me think, do we ever see Chin doing this? Would Chin ever leave before the fire and the kid dies? Or is he there until the ship sinks because i think this is kind of cool also as much as it's not the best thing to do practicality wise or maybe just in terms of your prospects in the future so just quit something while you don't have anything else set up um you should probably try and set your podcast up on the side while you're doing your fucking gig i still think it's kind of cool that he's quitting because you know it's a great job it's probably some people's dream job but he doesn't want to do it anymore he's kind of lost motivation he's not just going there to clock in and clock out he's not feeling passionate about it so he wants to do his own thing and kind of deciding to do it on your own on your own you know merit is actually quite cool i'm not gonna lie so i hope he does well going forward he's going to but i'm gonna play the clip from your mom's house of nadav announcing that he's leaving nadav wow. aka patty o'callaghan um shalom 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 so happy to be here i'm sure um i'm so excited i even something. brought something for you uh, nice boy yeah. this is just getting better and better <laughs> um this is real gotcha journalism <laughs> <laughs> you like how does it make you feel already uh like i want to kill myself sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. so why don't you tell the folks why you're not in the booth and sitting here sure um you know, it's been a, uh, it's been, it's been a wild ride. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, I remember when I reached out to you guys, it was like a week after mostly stories came out. Wow. It's 2016. Yeah. February, 2016. That's, uh, that's when I reached out and within a day you responded back and being like, Hey, this resume is pretty good. What do you want to do? You want to take us to YouTube? Yeah. Meet me for breakfast. Uh, like in a couple days or something. Was it, was it, was it 26? That's actually a good impression. I like how impressions aren't just about sounding like the person. Sometimes the cadence as well. He actually has got the cadence of a ton to grow pretty well there. Big up, Nadav. 16? It was 2016. Wow. Did Are you sure? Uh-huh. Well, positive. here's why I don't think that that's an accurate. Can I tell you why? Yeah. So in 26, like our son was born in 2015. Towards the end of it? Yeah. December. And here's the thing. I remember meeting you at this coffee place in Redondo Beach. Right. Well, we were already not living down there in 2016. No, 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 no. When I joined you guys, yeah. Um, cuz you were still out of that office, there was at least two or three recordings that were still from that office. Okay. Remember cuz we moved out of that Redondo place when Ellis and, was 4 months old. Oh, and so that's when we met you. Mm -hmm. It was early 2016? Yeah, I think it was like one of the first times that Christina had come back from record. Like, you were just like, oh okay. my God, hi, I'm Christina. So nice to meet you. I just had a baby. I swear I don't look like this all the time. Like, <laughs> Did I say that? That does sound accurate. Wow. <laughs> that sounds like yeah. me, yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, uh, 2016 was when I started with you guys okay. and, you know, just slowly building and building and just seeing this fucking crazy thing evolve to yeah there's now cameras hanging off the ceilings and joysticks and all like everything's just getting crazier and crazier yeah and 
yeah, as time goes on, like uh, you stay at a place for for a pretty long time, and you kind of get used to just the way things are. And, yeah. Um, I think, and I think a lot of people could relate to this, but when you go into a place day after day, you something just hits you at, at some point, and you look around, and you're like, I don't, I don't think this is for me anymore. Uh-huh. Or kind of brutal, isn't it? Kind of a brutal indictment of them. I wonder if it's a do with how it's changing and becoming more of a network, your mum's house. The quality of the show has obviously gone down drastically, um, unfortunately, especially me being a fan of the show. I still watch it from time to time, but it's definitely not as funny as it once was. And I wonder if it has to do anything with that Rob incident, that little back and forth they had. I wonder if that's the one thing that kind of set them over the edge. It's like, you know what, I can't. Because obviously the future is those guys, right? The future is Danny Brown. The future is Dr. Drew After Dark. The future is that Rob Isla podcast. They're going to try and do more of those things because if you know anything about comedians, if they can get out of doing more work, they will. So setting up a network and having those things and then only focusing on stand-up comedy is probably going to take a lot of stuff off their plate. So they, it, would, it would be in their best interest for Tom and Christina to try and get more shows get blowing on your mum's house right and become maybe maybe in the future even produce someone special or something that might make more sense um but obviously for him it's like it's going to be way more people there he probably doesn't like or give a fuck about he obviously went into the job because he liked the show like most producers that's why i think the bobby hutch thing probably stings more when i was reading it i'm just thinking about it now it sounds like most podcast comedy podcast producers are fans of the show that's how they get in touch that's how they find out that they want to even do the job they listen a lot they probably see things or hear things that they could probably improve and they reach out so it probably hurts them way more because they were there you know when the show wasn't good when the show was shit or when the show wasn't as good as it is now and then the person that owns it doesn't want to compensate them properly it's like bro don't you know that i contribute to your success also I played a valuable part in your success. You know I mean, I can understand why producers get really annoyed with this sort of stuff. But again, credit to Nadal for leaving on his own terms. I don't think this, I feel like me and this place and everyone in there, we've kind of all outgrown each other. Yeah. And uh, it kind of all just hit me at once. And, and yeah. And so, I mean, with that, it's, it was very hard for me to come to that realization. It was very hard for me to have that talk with you guys uh, when we did, but. Oh, that's I'm, horrible. Uh, I'm that's about to cry. Man. I'm resigning from my position here at YMH. And you're moving on. That's good, though, to be fair. I'm not going to lie. Sometimes in life, you don't get a chance to resign. You honestly don't. Sometimes, especially in my career, working in fucking startups, I've worked for like, I don't know, three companies now that went bankrupt, right? A couple of them, I didn't even get paid on time and shit. I had to chase that money around. It's kind of brutal. It's not the best of things. Like when you do your job, you try your best and you're always there on time and you do the things that need to be done and the things that are your control just mean the company goes away and it's not about you. It's about everybody else also. So when you get a chance to leave a job on good terms and on your own on your own regard as well, I think it's, it's a good thing. You should hold your head up high about it. You should be kind of proud that you did that, you know? Plus he was an important part of the show. I know now the show is shit. People complain about his laughter in the background. But when the show was good, and you heard him laughing, it would enhance the fucking comedy. The bits and stuff they did. Um, Nadav is Googling. That song, like, honestly, man, he played a huge part, like, in it. Like, similar to, like, Ben Avery on Tim Dillon. Like, people kind of discount the role that these guys play in podcasts because they just think they're just switching cameras and shit. But for comedic value, for banter and stuff, right, um, when they go away, you notice it. The Tim Dillon podcast has gone down 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 ever since every has gone and i'm a fan of tim dylan but it's not it's not as good as it once was it really isn't and i think you're gonna unfortunately notice a fucking big difference unfortunately for your mom's house once he steps on i think um everybody <laughs> bodybuilding news i was in the gym why is he leaving is he going to israel no he's not he's not he's leaving to do his own thing He's going to he's going to set up his own podcast and do some Patreon stuff and stuff. Be curious about a couple of things. Number 1, what's going to happen with the marathon in November? <laughs> so, uh I was thinking about that. And you know, when I when I'm working here and everything and you know, uh I knew that I had this I'm not going to lie, right? When I first heard him sp- explain this, cuz I didn't know nothing about the whole Rob Isla thing. I only found out after the fact, right? When I went under your mom's house um subreddit. 
But when I watched this the first time, I was thinking to myself, why does he sound so tense? Why does he kind of sound like he really wants to say, get fucked, I'm not doing a fucking marathon? That's what it sounds like he wants to say, but he's being nice and he's trying to, you know, be polite. But he also sounds very tense, very pissed off and agree. Like you can kind of sense the rage under his voice. And then obviously when I did my Googles and checked the subreddit and they were said, oh yeah, basically Rob Isler got him to do this, right? He kind of, you know, bullied him into agreeing to do a fucking marathon because he was taking the piss out of him being fat and all this sort of shit. That's why it made sense. I was like, oh, now I get why he sounded so angry about it. Big old support team to help me with everything. And these last couple weeks, my hip has been bothering me so much that I couldn't go on my two a day walks. Mm -hmm. Like the people, the health people that I've been going to were like, Hey, fucking don't walk for a week. You fucking idiot. Like it, it, it hurts yeah. when you walk. Don't, yeah. wa don't walk for a little bit. Right. I'm like, Oh, but I have a marathon coming up. And, um, and I realized now also with, you know, with me leaving, um, and me losing health insurance pretty soon. I'm going every tendon <laughs> on my bones uh -huh. are going are going to disconnect. <laughs> like I am a hundred percent positive this marathon will handicap me. Uh -huh. That's so fucking great. So okay, Nadav is also being a bit of a. I hope this is a bit, but he's being a bit of a bitch with this stuff. You need to relax. It's just it's just a run. I hate that. There's there's people out there that have this reaction to exercise, and I wonder why it is. Like especially cardio. They have this idea that if they go out for a run, they're going to like break every bone in their body. Like it's not that deep, bro. If you can't run, you just walk. That's what most people do. Even when I go on long runs, I'll go on like a 10 mile run. Maybe like after eight miles, I'm t my legs can't walk, operate properly and I don't have good form. You just start walking because you don't want to injure yourself by running, you know, with terrible form. You just walk the rest of the two miles. It's not that big of a deal. But guys that don't like to exercise, they always have such fucking you know fatalist ideas about what's going to happen when they start running it's like it's not that deep it really isn't but i hope it's just a bit are you doing it <laughs> no oh, okay, okay. Oh, okay uh what i am doing is um this has kicked me in the ass and i've seen how good it feels to feel good yeah right <laughs> feels great wouldn't have thought that yeah. wouldn't have thought that because i mean uh in february uh i did go to gambling rehab uh, but at the same time, uh, I don't know if this is news to people, but my father also died around the same time oh, that sucks. and I kind of just started eating compulsively just as a comfort thing. Sure. And I think that's when I ballooned from what the weight I thought I was, you thought you were, that I thought I was at my fattest. And then I was like, so, <laughs> you learned, I learned so much fatter that I'm so much, <laughs> my fattest is actually such a bigger number than I thought it was. Uh, that's pretty crazy, right? It's really crazy. Yeah.